everyone, and welcome to This is USG, a video podcast by the universities at Shady Grove. Nine universities, one campus, great results. I'm Ann Kadimian, Executive Director of the Universities at Shady Grove. I don't know about many of you, but I often have an idea, and I think to myself, I should write a blog about that. But actually translating the idea into a well-written, interesting read with relevance for my audience, it's quite challenging. And speaking for myself, it means the blog rarely gets written. Tonight, however, we will talk with a number of students here at USG who regularly blog, developing a voice and a rhythm to share insights, ideas, points of view with their readers. It is my pleasure to welcome them all now. We have Maria Nelly de Leon uh, in the uh, for the University of Maryland College Park Communications. Welcome, Maria Nelly. Thank you for having me and for having all the other bloggers shared. Absolutely. Uh, Laura DeMarco is also with the University of Maryland College Park in communications. Hi, Dr. Kadimian. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Jalen Mayo is a UMBC social work student. Jalen, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And Leanne Mayo is from the University of Maryland College Park, also a communications major. Leanne, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. And Michael Schlitzer is a UMBC data science grad student. Michael, welcome. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. So welcome. It's great to have you all here. Um, I'm going to just get started with just asking you to reflect a little bit on this last year. Uh, you know, part of being on the USG campus is, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful experience, uh, very, uh, very wonderful community here, but we haven't all been together for more than a year on the campus. And I'm wondering if you can share with me a little bit about your experience this past year as a student. What has it been like? What's, what's been challenging about it? Uh, Maria Nelly, maybe you can start for us. Of course. So I first came to USG back in 2019, way pre-COVID. <laughs> so I expected to just kind of be on campus, be interacting with other students, going to class, just very typical college experience. However, when March of 2020 came around and they told us, we're going to have to shut down campus for like maybe the spring break. We're going to give you guys an extra week of spring break and then we'll let you guys know what we're going to do. I assumed, okay, great. We're probably going to be out for maybe maybe a month or two. And now, a year later, we're still here on this Zoom meeting. And <laughs> for me, that was a huge change because this was not something I expected throughout college. I, again, just assumed we would come back after a while, but Corona had another plan for us <laughs> instead. But thankfully... I was still able to continue blogging for USG and that's given me some comfort and some way to kind of release some tension mm -hmm. as the various topics I do for USG is quite random. And I guess it would just depend on how I am feeling. I just came out with a blog on Monday about living with braces because it just kind of came to me as a way of just thinking, hey, I think some people actually don't really know what it's like to have braces. And I'm for someone who's wearing braces. Let me just share that with all of you. Maybe you all could kind of probably either show empathy or sympathy, depending whether or not you have braces or not. I would just hope maybe these blocks would bring people comfort through this time of coronavirus, because it definitely did for me. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it does. Um, thank you, Maria and Ellie. What, what do other people think? What has it been like for you? I'll go. Um, my situation is a bit different. I'm the only junior in the room. And so I've been on the USG campus for one day. Oh, no. <laughs> entire junior year. It was last semester. It was for um, Dr. Adam Nixon's class. And uh, so not being able to really see what the campus is like, um, honestly, I do feel a little cheated, not to be the negative Nelly of the group, but I do. But, you know, it could certainly be a lot worse. Uh, vaccines are coming out. 
Uh, I'm actually getting my first dose in April. And the more to the point, um, the staff members, my professors and the USG uh, staff have been really great and they've done everything they can to kind of make us feel like part of the community anyway, which is a lot harder when you haven't seen what the community looks like. Um, great point. So I really got to give it to the people at the writing center and the career center and, you know, everybody who's just trying really hard. And hopefully I'll get to meet you all in person uh, next fall. Yeah, I, I was going to say, yeah, it, it has been a bit of a challenge. Um, I had one class on campus um, and that was through Montgomery College, which is where I transferred from. And so I kind of got a feel for the campus. Um, and then, yeah, COVID happened and it, it, it'll be a little strange, I think, not like being in person and graduating this fall. So, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. And I wish I wish we could have gone back in person. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a lovely campus. I mean, it really is beautiful. And as somebody who, who went to undergraduate at UMBC up in Catonsville, um, and I have children that are about the age of many of the other participants here. But uh, when I walked on to the Shady Grove campus for the first time, the first time I ever went onto the campus was when I went to get my student ID. And I remember walking on campus. And I took my son with me and I just said, this is going to be awesome. This is so beautiful. It just feels like this feels like home instantly. And I had never been there before. And so we had one semester on campus and I, and I liked it. But I, I do think that, you know, community, a lot of community is what you make it or what you make of it. And so um, I think echoing what Laura had said, the staff and the programs that exist at Shady Grove have, have really gone out of their way to foster opportunities to connect. And every time I've taken advantage of an opportunity like I think uh, Wednesday is International Night, and I'm really looking forward to that, even though it's remote. When you join into these things that they have going on, it's a lot of fun, and you find that people are really interesting, and they are, quote, unquote, your people, even though you're not uh, together. So that's what I have to say. So like Marinelli, I actually got to be on campus. Um, I started in fall 2019, and I'm very engaged on campus. I'm actually one of the student ambassadors. And now in my second year as a student ambassador, I'm a tour trainer. And it's kind of funny, tour training my newbies, and we're not on campus. I'm telling them about this campus that they've never seen before. And I'm training them to go to these prospective students and tell them all about this campus they've never seen. So I am happy in a way that I get to tour train, even though we're not on campus, and I get to make this campus alive for them through imagery but I do miss my campus full heartedly. And I just love still telling my prospective students, you know, by the time you get there, hopefully it's open again. And it's going to be even better probably because if they can make it such amazing online, then I have no doubts for what they can do even more in the future in person. Yes. I'll piggyback on that too. We recently had an ACES event for prospective students, for students who were in high school, they're seniors right now. And we always just boast to them about what USG is. I do this kind of on the side because I am part of the ACES program here at USG and they've been a huge part in getting me here. Matter of fact, it was someone within CSEF or ACES who told me to come and blog because I told them I want to be a journalist, but USG doesn't really specialize in journalism. So they said, why not blog and improve your writing skills there? And I said, that's a good idea. So here I am. <laughs> That, that's great. I've been listening to all of you talk about your experience and how you put the positive into this this time as well is really, really interesting. And, and um, I'm sure people really appreciate hearing that. I wonder if you all could talk a little bit about, you know, uh, Maria Nelly, you mentioned your inspiration for, uh, for a blog on braces, right? I'm wondering if you all can talk about either how the time of COVID has inspired some of your blogs or just how you come up with an idea to blog. I mean, what, what is your process for 
for coming up with an idea. I, I think that, you know, I've read through a lot of your blogs and they're all terrific and very inspired. How did these ideas come to you? What, what happens or what's your process? Anybody can jump in. I think I'll go ahead and start. Um, personally, I, I like to do blog about things that I'm interested about. Um, and, and I think with this COVID period um, about mental health and that aspect of it, I think, yeah, I can speak for everyone. I think we've all kind of dabbled in uh, talking about that. Um, and yeah, and I, I just put out one um, about like nutrition. That's something that I've, I've been interested in for a while. So um, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of the same thing with me. It also, I guess it would vary on how I am feeling. Like I said, with the braces idea, it sort of just came to me to kind of just as a thought and I kind of just went with it. And a lot of my blogs, I try to give some kind of advice and it's kind of like a diary for me, honestly. <laughs> I kind of try to let people know, I guess, how I'm feeling, what I'm doing. In one of my blogs, when I was talking about thankfulness and being thankful for the things that you have, one of the things that I said I was thankful for was actually having good health. And I did confess in that blog that at some point around that time, a little bit after I posted that blog, I had contracted the COVID virus. So I just decided I wanted to let that out there because I couldn't just hold it in. I'm pretty sure soon enough people would have known that, hey, she had contracted the virus and I wanted people to know I'm thankful for still being alive and being one of those people that did get this virus and managed to survive mm -hmm. thanks to me being young and probably because my body was just working through it all even though I was probably in constant pain and I felt like I wanted to just relax and just mm -hmm. chill but I think that would have probably killed me if I hadn't if I did and honestly it kind of just is like a little diary for me it's just me letting the people know how I'm doing Here's some advice for X, Y, and Z. I just want people to know that, you know, they're not the only ones out there who are probably feeling scared, worried, afraid of what this could do. And I'm just trying to make sure that people find some kind of comfort in these blogs and maybe learn something new. I always try to teach maybe something that a lot of people probably don't know. Like with my International Women's Day blog, I told them of three different women who a lot of people don't really know probably who did so much for the world, but they're probably not recognized as much for the fact that they are women or maybe because during the time that they were doing their things, it was not really accepted. Like with the first person who I posted about, she wasn't really chosen to represent, you know, the civil rights movement simply because she was 15 when she got pregnant. She wasn't, you know, fair skin. Instead, they chose Rosa Parks to be the boycott with the buses in Montgomery, Alabama. So I just thought this could be a way to educate people and give them comfort during this time of need. Who, who else wants to share about your inspiration for the blogs that you write? I can yeah. go next. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. Yeah. So um, just like um, I think it was Laura who brought, or Leanne that brought it up that mental health. So I'm actually a social work major, like you said, and I work in behavioral health. I'll be pursuing my master's in behavioral health actually this fall. So my blogs are totally on mental health. I feel like um, like a mental health guru. So definitely everything I learned from my field placement and everything I learned in my classes, my, I love to put that into my blogs. I love for my blogs to be like educational and like Mary Nelly said, um, offer advice. So that's really what I like to do for mine. That's something I want to pursue. Definitely going forward is blogging about mental health and giving more coping skills. Another special thing I really like enjoying doing is having someone else's voice being heard. The last blog I did was on, um, National Social Workers Day. And I had um, my fellow um, social work association officers shared their love for social work. And I posted that on there. So I like to have a little bit of not just my voice, but everyone else's as well. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Michael and Laura, do you want to share your process with us? I'll go ahead. I, I, I come at it from two ways. In, in, my, in my heart, excuse me, my heart, 
I'm an encourager. I like to encourage people, you know, to uh, work through difficulties and, and, and uh, just help people to believe in themselves. And so a lot of the things that I've written on come from my interaction with my fellow students. You know, they'll say, boy, this is this is hard. I, I don't know if I, I'm not sure if this is the right thing. And I, and I, you know, give them some advice maybe in class, but I, I, I like to be that, be that dad and say, you can do it. You can do this. Yes, it's hard, but you can do it. And uh, so the other thing is I, I do like to read. So I read the newspapers and I read the, um, like the op-eds in particular. And I, and I take the approach uh, of writing one of these blog posts a lot like that. You know, I, I figured you've got to have an introduction and you've got to have a conclusion and you've got to stay on point all the way through. So I have an idea. I'll wake up very early in the morning and I'll jot down an idea and then mull it over and then go back to it and flesh it out and, you know, have a lot of false starts. But that, that's the way I, I kind of a, a approach it. But in general, I, I want to encourage people to, uh, to, you know, keep going and make the best because this is the situation, right? I mean, there's, we all wish COVID would go away, but wishing doesn't make it so. So we just have to keep going and, uh, and we can do it. Um, I'm noticing my, uh, my process for picking a topic is kind of overlapping with everyone else's, which is neat. Uh, what I do to pick a topic is whatever I'm doing, I'm a very busy person. So if I'm taking time to do something extra at school, extra tutoring or a club or this, it's because it's something I really want to do. And so a lot of times, if I'm writing about something that's going on with me, I write about why it's important to me, why I want to do it. So for example, my most recent post was about Dr. Susan Lopez-Picote. Uh, it was a woman in STEM post. And I chose to write about her because if we were on campus, it would be very important to me to check out the Women in STEM Club, but we're not on campus, so I didn't know where to find them. But it's still important, so there. And also, I have to give Mary and Ellie an assist for that because she's the one who put the Women in STEM idea in my head, and then I just fleshed it out to the post that you can read today. Bloggers, gotta help bloggers. <laughs> Yeah, bloggers got to help bloggers. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. So I'm hearing from all of you, you know, your own personal reflections um, that you share. I'm hearing motivation and inspiration for others. I'm hearing education. I'm hearing self-help and 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 support. All of these are amazing. And and you know, I'm wondering what kind of feedback do you get in when when you put these out there do you hear from people do do people get in touch with you and let you know thanks for writing that or do they disagree with you or uh, you know what, what what's it like to put yourself out there and get that feedback and then what kind of feedback are you getting i can go first so i actually get really great feedback i'm so thankful for it because it is scary especially i don't know anyone else here but i wouldn't just position feeling like I am not a good writer, like this is going to push me to be a better writer, so I'm going to do it. So the fact that I get such amazing feedback definitely makes me more excited to pursue and keep make, posting blogs, especially my president for Social Works and Association, Christian. He reads all my blogs the day they go up and always sends me a text about how amazing they are, and he tells so many people about them. So he's definitely probably my number one cheerleader and supporter for that. So yeah, I get great feedback and it definitely keeps me going. Yeah, likewise, I post my blogs with this group that I'm a part of. It's an, an application called Discord. A lot of them consist of friends that I have. One of them is a streamer who uh, does stuff on Twitch and he encouraged me to post my blogs there to have, you know, our fellow followers look at them. And all the time, they're always saying like, wow, Marianelli, that's actually really good. I didn't know this. Or like, please keep up the good work. You're just such a good writer. It makes my day. Thank you so much. And it honestly, 
makes me so happy to know that there are people that are taking an interest in what I'm writing about. And it's just, for me, it just makes me feel warm inside knowing that, you know, I have supporters there and also my friends and family also take time to read them. And they're also like, that is so cool. Like, you're such a good writer. I'm like, I'm just trying to do my, what I can to improve my writing and also make people's day in some way. So the feedback's been really good. I've been getting some interesting feedback too. I'm not a social media person, so I put my blogs on LinkedIn and, and it's really great to see uh, comments, but I'll occasionally get likes from people my parents used to work with and it's really cool to think that I'm on their radar because of Around the Grove. And then, interestingly, the other feedback I've been is the Around the Grove blog team is all women, because Michael, you write for Discover USG, right? I just write and they do what they do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I've been getting feedback to try to find topics that guys would be interested in. So that's interesting to me. And I don't know if you can leave comments on this podcast, but if you can, I'd be happy to hear them. Yeah, I think it, it's really just been um, really positive feedback. And I, um, I think the most likes I've gotten on uh, a blog post was, um, I wrote one, um, it was, titled stressed out. So I think a lot of people <laughs> related with that. And um, that was, so this year has been my first year having full-time classes and probably like three, three years or so. And so um, it's, it's kind of cool to be able to relate with people um, and yeah, get, get good feedback on your personal posts. Yeah. Michael, what about you? Uh, like Laura said, I, I'm not a huge social media person myself. Uh, that's that's my the domain of my my kids, uh, but uh, it it the posts do go out to LinkedIn. That's really the only social media thing that I that I really follow, and so I have gotten a few comments back on LinkedIn from that post. A lot of it, it's kind of like just like Laura was saying, people are like, hey, I didn't know you did that. That's a good job. And it, it, it does help. I mean, it, it makes you, I think like Marianelli said, it, 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 it feels good to be recognized. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Michael, if we could, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in on your experience here for a minute. So you're, you're in graduate school at USG. Um, all of our other guests are, are in the undergraduate programs. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience as a graduate student at USG? I think I think you said that you you were an undergrad at UMBC, where and you're you're getting your graduate degree from UMBC. So could you tell us a little bit about your experience as a graduate student? What what brought you back to uh, USG? You know, I, I think I read one of your blogs about the eureka moment of, of yes. coming back to USG. Could you share a little bit of that with us? Sure. It was the, a strange, the darndest thing, as uh, Art Linkletter used to say. Um, the, anybody who remembers that, kudos to you. But um, uh, it, it was a radio ad that talked about USG. So I, I had been, uh, lived my life, had a career, but had gone back and was studying through just kind of the internet way of studying things data science and I thought I, I would really like to get a degree in data science and so I was investigating some other universities and literally I was driving on the Beltway and there was a commercial for UMBC at USG you know and they we have uh, graduate degrees in data science and cybersecurity and I was like hey I know data science I know UMBC where's USG I never heard of USG. And so I went, looked up, looked at the map, and sure enough, there it was. Uh, and it was, now, the other nice thing about USG for me, even though I'm a Marylander at heart, I've lived in Virginia, Northern Virginia, for the past, I don't know, 20 some years. And UMBC did extend um, to people in my county, they extended in state tuition. So it made USG viable for me because, you know, the only place I can go to school. Is Maryland. I, I love 
the university system at Maryland. So I came back and I really, as you can, you may be able to tell, I am an older uh, person. I've mentioned my children of college age, but I came back without really having any expectation or knowing what to expect. And like I said, when I walked onto campus for the first time, had such a great just feeling in response to the architecture and to the build it, the way it looked, felt great. Came on campus, there are people all over, you know, people of all ages, people from all over and jumped right in. And I have been a student all along, uh, but not in that formal sense where you get a grade at the end. And, um, you know, just I loved the professors that I had. I loved the work. I loved coming home and, you know, scratching my head and furrowing my brow and having to work through a problem that has a deadline, right? And where there's going to be somebody on the other end that says, no, that's not right. Well, I want to get it right. But I really did enjoy it. And I think had I not been on campus, even for one semester, this whole thing would have been uh, different. Because the reason I, I really picked USG is because I wanted that in-person experience. I wanted a professor that I could reach out and know and touch. And since uh, that we've had, I had one professor, one semester of that and kind of a half a semester. Uh, but as I think I'd mentioned before, I'm a big believer in it is what you make it, right? You get out of it what you put into it. So I make sure and I tell my, my daughters and my son to always know that the professors know my name, not because I'm causing problems, but you know, I have questions and I want them to know who I am um, because that's how I learn. And so I have been able to do that. And I, I think, well, you might have to ask them, but I think it's been good for the professors too. We, we, we work together well. And I, I feel like I haven't missed a beat with, uh, with COVID and switching over to uh, distance learning. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. So I'm going to ask you all to do a little bit of reflection here as we wrap up. Um, I wonder, you know, this, um, some of you are getting ready to graduate. Uh, I think uh, Maria Nelly is going to be the graduation speaker, as a matter of fact. And yay! Yes. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. And, you know, I wonder, maybe you can give us a preview of an upcoming blog uh, or just, you know, share with us, what are your reflections right now? You know, if you, if you had to write a blog about the, you know, about this moment and kind of reflecting on the end of the year is coming up, you may get ready to graduate. You know, what would your blog be about right now? What, what do you think? I'm putting you all on the spot a little bit for your next blog, but what do you think? If I had to, I guess, think about what my blog would be, it would probably just be an entire reflection of like my past two years with USG. I was fortunate enough to at least have like maybe a semester and a half with them. And I've always known USG for a while because of the Achieving Collegiate Excellence and Success Program, the ACES program, because they were the ones that told me, you could come to USG and we'll still help you with the things that you need in order to graduate. And with them, I was able to come here and be able to experience it for, if it, if it was a semester and a half. And I'd probably talk about all the hardships that I had to go through, all the good times I had, the friends I've made, and even how just wild it is that I'm going to be graduating and let them know what my future plans are because I am going to go to grad school. I am gonna to go to the universities of, to the University of Maryland College Park at the Philip Myrtle College of Journalism to finally fulfill my dreams of becoming a journalist <laughs> and being accepted there and because I came here, I don't think I would have been able to do that if I had chosen to go to another university, which I'm not going to say their name because they're one of the universities here. So I'm not going to try to show a uh, shade, at least not right now, <laughs> but letting them know this is where I've gotten and letting them know how that process was. I already gave USG a little bit of advice on how to start applying for grad school because that's literally how I did it too. I followed a certain timeline. Well, because ACES told us to follow that timeline in order to get into the school. And I was surprised it worked for me that they <laughs> accepted me into that school. 
And on top of that, giving me a fellowship to pay for the whole two years that I'm going to be there. So I'm like, wow. Okay. I will definitely thank USG for this because I'm sure without USG, I wouldn't be where I am. And of course, I wouldn't be the graduation speaker, which ironically enough, I wasn't expecting that either. So I'll probably write a blog about that too <laughs> in the near future. We're waiting for those blogs, Maria and Ellie. We're waiting for those. They sound great. But what 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 else do you all think, Jalen? What what are you thinking about for as you reflect on your time here and what you might blog about? I think that my final blog would definitely be more focused on my future, and um, just again instilling that confidence in those who are finishing their degrees because. Four years ago at Montgomery College, I would have never imagined that I would be going to graduate school immediately after with advanced standing with a fellowship that's paying for it. So I definitely would just talk about my future plans and like instill confidence in my readers because honestly, like you never know what the future holds, but having faith in the future and letting yourself be on your own timeline, it really works out. And I think that's definitely going to be my last blog. That is such excellent advice. Have have faith in the future. Let it work itself out. Have faith in yourself. It's such good advice. That's fantastic. I hope you write that blog too. So, uh, Leanne, what do you think? I would I would say similarly to um, what uh, Jalen has said um, about the future. Um, maybe um, doing like. Uh, tips for interviewing, um, since I'm doing that right now um, for internships and, and yeah, sticking with, I, I've done a couple like with, with networking, tips for networking or, um, and, but I think, yeah, unlike um, the other bloggers that have spoken, I, I don't know exactly what the next, my next step is, I guess. So the uncertainty is a little bit scary um so i think um yeah I, I think maybe just i'm not sure <laughs> just yeah being hopeful for the future and um yeah yeah i think you know at the end focusing on the uncertainty of the moment i know that's something that a lot of people can relate to right now is you know, COVID, the economy, all kinds mm -hmm. of things are really uncertain. And, you know, sharing sharing your own uncertainty, I'm sure that would that would be something people would really welcome. You know, we, we have a tendency to think that, you know, everyone's got everything figured out and there's a plan yeah. and we're just gonna, you know, but it's, it's yeah. all, you know, it can all be really murky and complicated, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a little bit scary, but it's also part of the excitement and wonder as well, so. That's yeah, funny. and a, a lot of internships are remote right now, and so I kind of feel like I'm I'd be missing out um, being remote and not in person. So, um, but just being yeah, trying to stay positive about the whole thing and knowing that everyone's going through it right now, the the uncertainty. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. That's great, Laura. What about you? What would your reflections be? Well, I'm not graduating, so. <laughs> I don't have to talk about my last blog post yet, but I think one thing I would want to talk about uh, would be the importance of joining clubs, even if they're virtual. Because um, it, it's hard enough to make friends in class, um, in person, and don't get me wrong, my classmates are amazing, but just by the virtue of they're on a mission, you got to focus, not a lot of time to socialize. So having clubs um, to kind of mitigate the distance of whatever's going on is really important in general. And COVID is a very big whatever's going on. So that's what I would want to talk about. Um, and I'm actually, I can vouch for this because I'm actually the vice president of the Zeta Sigma Honor Society. So yeah, definitely find, a club, find people you can relate to. Chances are they're awesome, especially at USG. I like that. I yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, 
these women, good grief, how brilliant, how brilliant. I, I, that is just so awesome to see, uh, to hear your stories. I, I, as a, as a father, I love it. It just, that's great to hear. My, uh, the things I'm going to write about um, are, I, I'm going to write about riding your bicycle, getting out in the nice weather. We've all been cooped up, right? Get out. And I, I really am going to write about uh, experiences I've had on the CNO Canal, which is not too far from Shady Grove. And uh, there, there may still be one or two people out there in, uh, in the USG community who have never experienced that, that national marvel of uh, of the CNO canal and a springtime it's a really nice time to be out there and see it so that's probably what i'm going to write about plus i get to show off like Lars said my clubs so i belong to the umbc cycling club ran under them campus years ago so i've got my kit my umbc cycling kit so i'll get a a picture of me on a, on a bike sporting umbc so that's that's my plan uh, these sound like great blogs let me just say, this has been so much fun getting to know all of you and understanding your process. Keep on writing. We need to hear from you. We need your voices. We need your advice. We need to get inside your head and understand what you all are about so that we can we can feel a little bit better, a little bit more knowledgeable, a little bit more inspired, um, a little bit more, you know, touched by friends. So thank you all so much for your time tonight. I know you're all super busy and it means the world that you took time to join me tonight and share about your experience and your blog. So everyone remember it's around the Grove and it's Discover USG and uh, check out these bloggers. They're gonna be writing great things into the future and doing great things as well. So thank you all and good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, good night. Thank, thank you, you. good night.